All right, it's time to talk golf. That's right. Tee off with Jan Stevenson. Also, you can uh, catch snippets on Prime Sports Network's YouTube channel. But if you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Tee off with Jan Stevenson. Jan will be back, of course, whenever there's a – actually, probably won't be back till the Masters. But keep in mind we're going to have our individual uh, videos coming soon. She has uh, some of her swing videos that she's going to be working on and also her insider report. So stay tuned for that. Promised we we're going to have our fantasy teams disclosed on this show, and we're going to do that in a little bit. But, Jared, uh, you know, th- we're coming off uh, a very interesting – couple of weeks between anybody that plays one and done and <laughs> sports books in general, like we could start with the sports books and, and Vegas, they're making out big time in golf for the past two. I mean, they're just everything, <laughs> every bet that has come in has probably been like 98% of the bets that have come in. They pocketed. Maybe yep. there was one or two people that put Grace and Mary on, on the board uh, the first week. But nobody had the amateur this past week, and so they've been just racking up uh, big, big time uh, golf money, uh, no question. And a one and done. Uh, if you, ha- you know, y- y- if you haven't uh, been lucky enough to to pick a winner, don't worry yeah. because nobody has. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, all three winners the past three weeks have been at least a hundred to one. I think Dunlap was three hundred to one most places last week. The um. And, and, and you know we we talked about Amex as a play. I, N- Amex next year, I might not bet a single golfer lower than a hundred to one. I might just take like ten long shots because that you know that right? event we we saw it again. I mean, it's just it's I don't like it, but you know I I, w- I would have liked to have hit a bet. Would have been nice. I, we had a I had I had Sibu Kim in the mix there um, into the weekend, kind of faded yeah. a bit on on Sunday, but um. Uh, otherwise wasn't on it too much. The, the one of Dunn's interesting because I don't know if you saw, because Dunlap is an amateur and did not get that winner's check, Christian Bezaden, who got the winner's money, and he also got works. it for one, he got it for, he got it for one and done as well. I think in our big one and done, there were like four or five people that picked him only. So, you know, not a, a big deal, but the people that dig, that did pick Bez, um, you know, got, got that 1.4 mil or whatever it did was. They? Yep. They okay. Did. I wasn't and, and, you know, and, and all the way down. So you know, whoever came in in third got second place money and so on. OK, so. well, yeah, that's interesting. But, yeah, it doesn't happen very often. And it's not like, look, obviously, the kid had a very good amateur career, no question. But it wasn't like he was on fire. He had played in three previous tour events, never made the cut, just played in Bermuda. Mm-hmm. A few months ago, some crappy golf course. It couldn't even make the cut there. So this is not like this was you know, like we, we, we've talked about some of these really hot young kids coming in, yeah. but he is an amateur. So it's not like he's a professional that, hey, watch out for these PGA Tour rookies. That's not what we're talking about here. This is just something that's freaky. And you have to give him a lot of credit, too, because it's very rare that any and maybe it's because he, he wasn't playing for money. Because normally a player that is in that should be in that much pressure is not yeah. going to survive. So that's the only thing I'm thinking of is, is that maybe the money has a lot to do with it. And Hey, I, I have nothing to lose. I'm not, this has nothing to do with a paycheck. This is just me going out playing golf. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I was impressed with was he, he didn't have his best stuff on Sunday. No, right? I mean, that was easily his work, but he like, like he did, he hung in there. He did enough. He did make, you know, he did have a few big shots on the back nine. He just sort of waited for, Burns, especially to surprisingly that Burns blew up like that. Like I, I, yeah. I, I always talk on the show. I think, you know, outside of the elite players, Homa and Burns are the two guys that I generally like trust the most to close it out on Sunday with leads. And so I, I, I was expecting Burns as soon as he took the lead um, somewhere around the turn to just kind of, you know, cruise and, and, and close it out. But he obviously didn't. And again, you know, Dunlap did enough to, to hang around where he was in position when, you know, Burns did make the mistake on 17 that Dunlap was, you know, in the position to, to uh, capitalize. Yeah. So uh, Nick Dunlap, uh, we'll find out whether or not uh, he can catapult this victory and have a career, anything close to the last amateur that won uh, Phil Mickelson back in 1991, I believe it was. So um Anyway, it is what it is. It's uh, it's been a crazy start to the season. 
a couple of long shots winning. We'll see if we get another long shot this week. I doubt it. No, nope. uh, but we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. This is a completely different course. It's yeah. a, the trends are different. It's a big boy ball coming up this week. So we're going to get into that in just a little bit. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, let's uh, first of all, I want to remind everybody that you uh, have your new uh, Twitter account at Smola Golf Bets. So uh, we have a link in the description. You could check that out. Um, you could also check out the link in our description for our Discord channel if you want to communicate with us. Because uh, you can do it during the week. Any, you have any questions, comments, or anything like that? The best way to do it is to uh, jump on our Discord channel, and uh, you can communicate with us anytime, especially uh, during the week if you have any questions or anything like that. Um, all right, now uh, let's take this time to finally talk about. Well, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time because if you want to find out what we did and what we talked about on our fantasy team, we did go. You know, we, we went a little bit inside our fantasy team on our 2024 preview show, which is available, of course, on the channel. But I'm going to post up now uh, just quickly. Here are the picks. So the, the so basically what, from left to right, these are the standings as well. Jan is, is in front. Jared is second. I'm third. So I'm from left to right. That's first to third. And then you see the numbers by the players. Those are those are the, the, the results of the players, but only for our point system because our point system does not allow points if you're 36th till the last player in the field that makes the cut. So I'm not going to put that in there. It's just the, 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 just representing what they did to get points or lose points by missed cuts. That's, that's what those numbers are for. So keep that in mind. The live tour players are on the bottom. Of course uh, that hasn't started yet. So you have our teams and you can follow that and we'll be updating this uh, weekly uh, just to let you know how things are going. But uh, anyway, that's uh, th those, that's our fantasy team, and I, I did make a move. I made our first transaction of the season, and uh, probably of no surprise uh, to Jared that um, it only took you know one 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 good showing on the PGA Tour in an event like this because uh, Christian had actually played. I think he had a sixth place finish at the end of the, towards the end of the twenty three season. Played well overseas. And then had a big runner-up, as we know, uh, cashing the check. Uh, but that's uh, Bezadenhut, uh, who I, I, I had mentioned last uh, couple of years ago. I made uh, some good money on him in back-to-back -back, uh, Euro events. And so he stuck with me. Uh, and like most players, he just needed a little bit of time. Now, I'm not saying he's going to have a great year, but I don't know. I just get a feeling that now he's starting to round into form. And uh, maybe this is the type of uh, second-place finish uh, that will uh, give him the confidence to have a pretty good season. Yeah, awesome performance. Mean, that was an awesome birdie he made on 18 on Sunday. Um, kind of thought it'd be enough to get him into a playoff. But yeah, I mean, he's a he's a he's a good player. He's still young. I think he's still probably ascending. He has a good skill set. So we'll we'll see. Okay, and then uh, and I dropped Vegas even though he made the cut, and I was happy about that. Um, I, I still think Vegas is going to have um, you know a nice season. Uh, after he had the win in the fall, but uh, I, I expect bigger things from Christian. Okay, so let's get into our preview and picks before we do that. Let's talk about the trends. So I'm going to pop up. Uh, here are the stats, first of all. Let's pop up uh, the stats. So you got the top 10 event history, last five years. That's uh, on the left. And again, I'm saying left, my left. Uh, and then on the opposite side, the top 10 on par fours, 450 to 500 yards the last 12 months. So those are, that's what Jared has for his key stats this week. So talk about the key one, which of course is that uh, 450, 500 yards deal on the par fours. Yeah. As you said, this is a big boy golf course. It's a, this is actually the longest course they play every season on the PGA tour. It's, it's over 7,700 yards. So, and, and that distance comes on these long par fours. And, and by the way, we're talking about the South course here. They do play the North course once between the first two days, right? Each guy plays the South and the North on Thursday and Friday. Yep. They have the cut after that and they play the South the final two days. So you do get three rounds on the South. So that's primarily what you want to look at. The North course is much easier it's like two to three strokes easier than the South. So you do want your guy to go low when he gets on the North course, but on, on the South course, six of the par fours fall between this 450 and, and 500 yard range. And two more of the par fours are within seven yards on either side. So basically you have eight 
holes on the south course that play between 450 and 500 yards. That's kind of the meat of the golf course. It's where you, it's where you need to you know hang, hang on. I'm not going to say you need to score because these are not birdie holes. They're holes where you know pars are good scorers. So I looked at um, just the players that have been best on those long par fours. A lot of familiar names. You know, a lot of the elites in this field are on this list. I think you know Ryan Fox, Taylor Pendrith. Or you know maybe surprises at three and four. They're they're both long hitters. You you, you want to be long off the tee on this golf course. You can survive as a you know average length hitter if you're hitting a bunch of fairways. But generally speaking, you want to be long off the tee. A lot of these guys you see on this top ten list are um, Sahith Tagala makes the list. Who you know we'll talk about later as as a bet. Hideki Matsuyama makes the list. Another guy I bet. But um again it's it's a lot of the long hitters and just a lot of the the best players in the world because again these these are tough golf or go, tough golf holes on a, on a tough golf course. Yeah. And, uh, it's interesting because you have the four top players this week, Shoffley, Cantley, Homa, Morikawa, all in the top 12 rankings. And yep. I, I actually like the, I think it's kind of interesting because you have Shoffley and Cantley are at the top there of those stats. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you look at it, Outside the runner-up by Shoffley in 21, both players haven't played pretty well here at all. I mean, both players just haven't had success on this golf course. Mm -hmm. at, in a com Even though Cantley's only been here three times, and which is kind of interesting that he decided to play this week, uh, considering he hasn't played, but maybe he's skipping Phoenix. Uh, but yeah, uh, and I and so when you're looking at, it's sort of like horse racing when 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 you want to because you don't want the favorite to be uh, hard, really hard to beat. You want to beat the favorite and you want to see the awards in the favorite. You want to remove the favorite so you can make some money in a race. Same thing in golf. You want to remove the favorites. You want to find things. And that's, that's to me good enough where I say, you know what, they don't have a great history at this course, but again, the, the stats uh, do apply. And that's, um, yeah. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing. Maybe it makes you think and obviously a little bit more than, cause that's why it's an important handicapping tool because you don't, and that's not always about how a player plays on a golf course. A lot of it does mm -hmm. have to do with the stats as well. Yeah. It, it's interesting. I think, um, you know, Xander and Cantley both should be good on this golf course. I also looked this week at just how guys have played generally on difficult courses where, you know, the scoring does not get out of hand like it has the past few weeks. And Xander Shoffley is first in this field on difficult courses. Patrick Cantley is second in this field on difficult courses. So again, they, they both should be good here. I think, um, you know, I mean, Cantley hasn't played here since 2019. Um, so I think he, he, he was not the player he is now at that sure. point. And then Xander, I do think there's some, some, you know, hometown pressure, right? He's a, he's a San Diego kid. Um, I'm sure he has a lot of other obligations when he comes to play here, a bit more feeling a bit more pressure to win at his hometown course. So that, that probably, um, you know, has played a factor in how Xander's done here. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is that I, I am, it was a lot easier for me to say, you know what, out of the four, I'm going with Homa and Morikawa and not Shoffley and Cantlay. Yep. And, and that's just also because of the fact that those two guys um, have played well on this golf course and the trends do work in their favor too. And speaking of the trends, just the most important ones, I'm just going to throw out there. Um, and just again, just so the queen rises to the top, even though Tiger has a lot to do with this, but major winners have won 19 of the last 28 uh, farmers insurance events. Okay. Now, again, Tiger has, I mean, I don't know what, seven of those, maybe, something like that. Um, yep. But here's also uh, important. Ten of the last 13 ranked in, in the top 35, okay? So exact opposite of last week, in the top 35 prior to winning here. Now, that includes 137th ranked John Rahm, who won in 2017. <laughs> so you get the picture. Even though it's 10 of 13, it's almost like 11 of 13 because Rahm was in there because that was the year Rahm took off. Um, only two players made this their first PGA Tour win since J. Don Blake won in 1991. That was Luke List in 22 and Rom in 2017. Matter of fact, Rom is uh, the only player since 1957 to, to win this event in his first appearance. So the combination of trying to win your first 
and then you forget about playing your first. <laughs> that just wipe that out. But even winning your first is going to be very difficult. Uh, ten of the last twelve first time winners scored a previous top ten here, and that's important. Including nine of the last eleven first time winners that scored two previous top twenties. So what it's telling is you better have some success here on this golf course before you win. It's, it's you just need it. So that's yeah, so that, that trend would knock separated separated those top four. As I say, I mean that the top ten trend would knock Cantley out. Um, the having played here before knocks out Minwoo Lee and Ludwig Ober. If you want to, you know, follow yep. that trend. So if you're if you're looking reasons to cross guys off, uh, you can use those trends from an from an odds perspective eight of the last nine winners here have been between 13 and 55 to one the only long shot that's won here was scott stallings back in 2014 he was 251 250 to one for that yeah. one. but otherwise it's been guys you know in that high end to mid range um so i think you know that's i know we've had the three long shots the past three weeks I wouldn't go chasing that week. I think you want i think you want most of your money to be on you know guys you know 60 70 to one and lower all right. So again, as far as the top four, uh, the other two, Homa, the defending champ, and you got to remind everybody when it's on when they're on the West Coast, that's when you yeah. pay attention to Max Homa. Uh, yep. He has, even though he has three top twenties in, in his seven appearances, he missed a cut in his first three. A prime example. You have to have time here. Since then, he's had three top ten. Two, excuse me, three top twenties in his last four. Uh, two top tens and another win last year. Uh, he has made 10 straight cuts worldwide with all in the top 25, five top 10s, and he got the win on the DP Tour not too long ago. Coming off a of 14th at the Century. That's the last time he's played. He's only played once here. Actually, once this year. Morikawa, uh, third last year here in his second appearance, both top 25, so that's good. And he is playing really strong golf. In his last four, he's been in the top seven in all four, fifth at the Century, Winning the Zozo, uh, so he is sort of like Homa. Hasn't played a whole lot yet, but uh, they're ready to play a lot of golf. So, yeah, yep. Morikawa is actually going to be my top pick. And uh, because he's so low, though, at 11-1, to 1, I'm not going to put a lot of money. Basically, he's going to put money on him that if he wins, I'm going to try to break even at this point after three weeks. That's pretty much the strategy. Um, because, yeah, it is kind of hard – to no matter what you think, it's just not. It's just when you got those four guys, it's just really hard mm. to try to just pick one yeah. out and expect that you're gonna. You got twenty five percent chance. Really, is the way you're looking at it. So yeah, but anyway, I think Morikawa is the way to go out of those four. I would go Morikawa, Homa, Shoffley, and Cantley. I I would go Homa, Morikawa, Shoffley, Cantley, um, and Morikawa has been excellent here. Again, if he's gonna win, he's gonna do. He's not gonna do it the the bomber way, right? He's gonna do it by the elite accuracy hitting fairways, you know, that's how he's going to do it. But that, that's what he's done the past couple of years. He's been good here. As you've said, I would lean Homa though, just, you know, California guy. We've talked about it. He's the best POA putter. This is the, this is the first tournament of the season where I'm pure, you know, West coast POA greens. Homa's the best POA putter in this field. He's the third best in this field on difficult courses. This is just the exact type of place that you want to play Max Homa. Unfortunately, I think, you know, that's, that's baked into his odds. I think he was, you know, 20 or 25 to one last year when he won, he's, you know, half of that this year. He is right now fourth though, odds wise out of the four, which I'm a little bit surprised, but that's the good thing. Yep. You're, you're still getting the best number out of the four. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Obera 20 to one, Min Lee at 20 to one, it, we're, but we're just going to scratch those guys out. Uh, it's going to be very I, hard for them to win in, this, in their first. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're both excellent course fits. Cause they both hit the ball a mile. So like, I, I would not be surprised if they play really well this week, sure. just the fact that they've never played here and the fact that they're, you know, I don't think they're great values at the odds they're at right now. Um, yeah. Put, puts me, I, I was, I was, I, I considered Obear. Um, he was one of the last guys off my list, but again, just the fact that he hasn't played here kind of, kind of crossed them off for me. All right. Uh, and then uh, we're in the range of the twenties and um I actually have uh, – actually, I'm going to post up our picks so everybody can see them. So these are the picks. So you get Jared, of course. He has his six. We both have six picks this week. And um, oh, it looks like I didn't update Morikawa's odds correctly. So you can scratch off the 25. It should say 11 
to one on Morikawa. What's that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. So, I mean, well, you, nobody could hear Jerry, by the way, when I was on the other side. He was wishing that there were 25, and I agree. Uh, but, okay. M is somebody that I have in my picks at 22 to 1. Uh, he, has, he has a really nice history line here. He has improved each his result every time he's been here in five appearances from 52nd all the way through to fourth last year, sixth the year before that. He's made eight straight cuts, all top 25s worldwide, uh, four top 10s, couple top fives. His runner up was in Korea, so keep that in mind. Um, remember, he's still looking for a win. He hasn't had one in a couple of years. So that's the thing that is just uh, – that's 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 the thing because we, M's always going to be around 20, 25 to 1 every week, and you're still banking on a guy that hasn't won in a few years. So it's a tricky mm-hmm. proposition. He's a one-and-done possibility for me. Uh, but, yeah, I think he's got to be a strong play this week. Yeah, so my kind of my final decision on my betting card was whether to play – Obear or Sungjae at this, you know, 20 to 22 range or to play like two or three of these guys more in the 50 to 60 range. And okay. you know, for, for the final card, I went with the, the, uh, you know, two pack of, of the longer shots, but Sung, Sungjae was, and I, and I even do prefer Sungjae over Obear. The more I, I've looked at it, um, just the fact that Sungjae has played here four times, as you said, he's been really good the past two. The one thing that worries me with Sungjae is that he's been really good the last two years here because the putter has been awesome. That's kind of what's carried him. Now he is a, he is an excellent putter and he's a good power putter. So that can definitely continue. Not that the ball striking has been bad, especially um, last year, he gained seven strokes on approach here last year, which is, which is elite. So I, I definitely like Sungjae. Um, again, he was someone I strongly considered betting if you can get him at, you know, 20 or 22 to one. And then you have uh, Tony Finau is also at 22 to one. Uh, Jason day is right around 25 to one. Um, and, and, and I know Jan, she gave me her top three, one and done. She hasn't decided which way she's going though, but Finau Morikawa are two of them. And Finau is really good historically on this golf course. Eight he's made eight out of nine cuts and they're all top 25s, including two top fives and a runner up. Five of those are top tens. The only thing is he's not on top of his game. He only has one top five, and that was at the hero since his win in Mexico. That's the thing I'd be concerned with, but horse for course, he's definitely that yep. type of uh, guy there. And Jason Day, I mean, he's won twice. He has five top fives out of eight of his top 25s in 14 appearances. Um, and what I liked also is that even though he hasn't been on top of his game the last few years, his last two appearances were seventh and third. So he just uh, really likes playing here, uh, and he's a dangerous player. Um, but yeah, he was a finalist for me. He was one of my last cuts out as far as a pick and even somebody I was okay. considering for one and done, but he's probably just not going to make the list. But, uh, I, w- I would take day over Fino. I just, I don't know. There's something about Fino's Fino's game, uh, that I need to see a little bit more, uh, you know, good play on, especially on some of these tougher golf courses. Yeah. So this is the range I'm looking in for one and done. And it is for me, Sung Jay, Finau and, and day that I'm considering for one and done. Um, day, day's just been excellent on the West coast for a while now. So I, I'm kind of deciding, do I want to play day this week or do I want to play him next week at pebble where he's also been awesome. Now, now pebble right. next week is an elevated event. So playing a pebble next week has the, the big, prize pool 20 million dollar total prize pool this week's just nine million so true I'm trying to decide if i want if i want to use day at an elevated event or if i want to use you know a higher caliber player but again i think all three of these guys are in play i'm with you on on fina he's, he's not playing well enough lately for me to bet him but like his course history here is awesome it makes sense this is the kind of course you know a long hard golf course that you you want to play tony fina on so i might end up um going with fina for one and done because I'm definitely not going to bet him at, at 25 to one. All right. Now I'm already taking a look. I'll tell you what, let me see here. I think I could pop this on the screen. I haven't done this in a while too. No, screw the yeah, Let me. All right. I'll tell you what, I'm going to pop this on the screen for the viewers and uh, here they are. Okay. So here are the committed list of pros for the Pebble Beach. And this is important, obviously, because we don't get a 
a big field like this, but uh, just running through the names again, obviously, Obear, On, Bradley, Burns, Cantley, Wyndham Clark, uh, Jason Day, Harris Inglis, Matthew Fitzpatrick, Tommy Fleetwood, Ricky Fowler, uh, Brian Harmon, Terrell Hatton, uh, Homa, Hovland, M, uh, Matsuyama McCarthy, McElroy. Uh, is 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 playing uh, Morikawa, Poston, uh, Rose, Shoffle, Scheffler, Scott, Spieth. Uh, I don't see Thomas. Um, hmm. You know what? Tom, you know what? Thomas is not in the um, signature events right now. He he hasn't qualified. Oh, is that the reason? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So I don't know if he'll get a. I don't know if they do special invites, but I think as of now, he's not qualified for the elevated events. So how do some of these other guys qualify when they got old? They're not as good as him. I, I don't know the exact criteria. I just I just heard um, okay. during That's the what they said during okay. the tournament last week that you know he had not qualified yet. All right. Well, uh, I guess we'll see. You would. Think, yeah, I mean, though, it's you know, it's. Yeah, yeah you he, would he might end up getting a, it, an invite. Yeah, because you would think. I mean, obviously, you could still because maybe it's. Look, it's possible now that he's not playing this week because he withdrew this week. Maybe he is playing next week. Maybe this just hasn't yeah. been updated yet. But those are just again that that's we never see this at Pebble, never. Right. So uh, that's it's almost like a major now. That's what we're looking, at. and it's not a major course. So now you get the the major field with a regular course, which which will make it even more interesting. All right. So yeah. So there you go. That's why it is going to be difficult to think about. Well, do I take day? Like in a normal year, oh, I jump all over Jason Day on that, you know, in that field at Pebble. Right. But now you're putting 15 more, you know, big time players at Pebble, and it ain't going to be so easy for Jason Day, uh, like it <laughs> normally would. So, exactly. all right. Um, now your top pick is the Gala. He's 30 to one. He's the only player you have under 60 to one. That's the Gala at 30 to one. And I, the Gala almost made my list too. Matter of fact, he's in my top three in one and done. So you have M. Day Finau, Janez Matsuyama Morikawa Finau, and I have M. Bradley Thagala. So those are our top three each for one and done. So Thagala, uh, talk about why you like him. Yeah, California guy, you know, went to school at Pepperdine. So obviously familiar with this course, familiar with Poa Greens, which again, I think is big this week. Um, Sahith is 17th best in this field, putting on Poa Greens. Obviously, he had the second place at Century two starts back. Um, he, he he won in the fall, right? He won. Uh, yep. He won in he won the his fall. First event. So he's obviously playing well. Did did miss the cut at the Sony, but I looked at that performance. The ball striking was fine. It was a poor putting performance for for Sahith, so I'm not worried about that. Look at the last 12 months, kind of the stuff you want for this golf course. Sahith is fifth best again on those long par fours. Uh, he's 39th in this field in driving distance. He's sixth in this field in strokes gain around the green, which is important. You know, these are smallish greens. You know, a lot of times you're, you're hitting long irons in his greens. So you're going to miss greens. You're going to have to be good scrambling, good around the green. So Hith is that. And he's played well here. He was 25th on his debut here back in 2022. He was fourth last year. He was also fourth tee to green last year. So hit it really well. Was right there in the mix. Um I think it's definitely a spot where where uh, Sahith can win, and uh, and we've we've mentioned this before. We don't care about what the gala, uh, what kind of form he's coming in on, because it doesn't matter. He's still um, an inconsistent player. So mm -hmm. you know, yes, he missed the cut at the Sony. Doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. He had a very good showing, which was the runner up at the Century, and that just shows you. He goes from runner up at Century to missing mm -hmm. the cut. So it's just yep. it's just the way he is right now. He's not a finished product. But uh, in this field, um, he's definitely right around that range you were talking about. That makes a lot of sense, especially after his excellent two appearances here. And also at 30 to 1, um, my second pick, my, my, my best money pick, though, is going to be Keegan Bradley. And mm -hmm. um, I think Bradley also has that. Uh, I think he's everything that I'm looking for regarding he's, he's got the major pedigree as well. Um, seven top 25s and 12 appearances, three top fives. So nothing great, but good enough, including the fact that you got the combination of runner up here last year, runner up in his last appearance two weeks ago. That's a really good combination. Um, and of course he, he won the travelers not too long ago. 
So the putting has gotten better, and that's the reason why he's starting to now put himself in position more uh, on a weekly basis. It's not as terrible as it once was. So I don't know how good it can be, but as long as it's improved a little bit, uh, then that's what gives him a shot. Anyway, uh, I think uh, I think he's he's a good. Uh, I think he's a really good play this week. Yeah, I, th- I think Keegan makes all the sense in the world for all the reasons you, you mentioned. As far as the putting goes, he he has putted well here. Um, he's gained strokes putting in four of his last six um, times wow. okay. at this event. Uh, one of the other times he lost just 0. .9 strokes, so he's basically uh, field average as far as putting goes. So something about these greens, um, Keegan seems to have figured out. All right. Uh, next up, odds wise, would be two of my players at forty five to one: Sepp Straka and Harris English. So uh, I don't really, I'm not a Straka guy. Uh, Jared takes Straka more than I do, <laughs> but I think this is a good week to take him. Now he doesn't have any top tens, but in four appearances, he does have two top twenties. So I, and he's 45 to one, 50 to one. Um, and plus in his last 10 appearances is the last 10 events, seven top 25s. Uh, he also has a win. Uh, that was the John Deere. Five of those are top t- uh, tens. And two of those are runner-ups. So in his last 10 uh, golf events, he has two runner-ups and a win. He's never been this hot before. He's never been a consistent player, but he's turning into one now, which is why he's the 17th-ranked player in the world. And um, he was runner-up at Hero not too long ago, 12th at the Century. So, yeah, I think the odds-wise, I I could see Straka being a good long-shot play. And then the other uh, long-shot play for me is Harris English, uh, who's also been playing well lately in his last four events. Uh, all of them are top 30s. Three of them are top 15s. He's coming off a 10th at the Sony. He was runner-up here in 2015 in his playoff loss to Jason Day. That was one of three top 15s in 10 appearances here. Wasn't English also in the mix in the U.S. Open they had here? Here was that. Was that oh, 2021? Okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, 2021 he came third at the U.S. Open here. Even better. Thank so the you. Course history, course history is good. Like you said, he's playing well he's an excellent putter he's an excellent poet putter um i think i like the straka play a bit more than english though i straka is just a good fit for this course i think he's plenty long he's just an excellent driver um he's a good long iron player poa is his best putting surface he's actually 25th in this field putting on poa my only concern with straka is just so far in his career he's been better at easy golf courses that the birdie fest like we saw him win last year but um now, again, I think course fit wise, this this should be a good spot for him. All right, now let's go to uh, some of your picks, including Hideki Matsuyama. So again, Jan has Matsuyama as a possible one and done. You have Matsuyama as one of your picks. He is getting sixty to one, which is a big number. He has four top twenties and ten appearances with two top tens and one top five. Yeah, Matsuyama and, and my next bat, Justin Rose, we're kind of. Largely just value bets. I just think the numbers are, are too big on. I can't those believe guys. Rose went from forty-five to one on Monday. It's Tuesday morning. He's eighty to one. Yeah, and I saw a ninety to one what, this morning what, too. What, I think is I, something we don't well, know. People just I think pe- people aren't betting him. The books want some action on him, so they're making his number bigger. I'm. I'll, I'll take it. Um. Yeah. Yeah, Hideki. I, I wish she was playing a bit better coming in, um, but I also think birdie fest type courses we've been on the past few weeks aren't exactly where he wants to play and not not that he can't win those we saw him win the sony um but he, I, I like hideki better on tough golf courses he is 11th best in this field on difficult courses over the past couple of years he's seventh in course history here over the last five years that includes seven straight made cuts at the farmers he did have a third place back in 2019 he came in ninth here last year and again he does a lot of the things i want to see on this course. Uh, my concern would be the driving has not been great lately. He's 49th in strokes gain off the tee over the last 12 months, but he's eighth best in strokes gain approach. He's eighth best around the green and he's also eighth best on those long par fours. So uh, I just think, I think 60 to one is uh too big of a number for her decky here. Yeah. And Jan likes him for some reason. So, and one and done and you don't have to, yep. I mean, taking players who are currently uh, where Hideki is, uh, and your one and done is, is you don't have to. I mean, there's only what 35 picks we get a, a year in one and done 30. Right. Something. Yep. So, yep. um, she must really like him for some reason. Um, and then, uh, Rose, like you said, uh, he has 
seven top 25s and 13 appearances. Yep. In his last six, five top 20s, four top 10s, two top fives, and a win. And you're getting yeah. yep, same deal. One. Yeah, he's yeah, Rose is third in course history over the past five years. He's 14th best in this field on difficult golf courses. Um, over the last 12 months, he's 22nd best on approach. He's 14th, the best uh, strokes gained around the green. He's he's 22nd on those long par four. So again, he's not he's not a big hitter. But um, yeah, he he finds a way to score on these these tougher golf courses, those long par fours, and anyways, the, the results kind of speak for themselves at Farmers. I I also hit Justin Rose when he won this uh, oh. back in 2019 or That'll whatever. Work. So I, I have some good good vibes with that Rose here. Helps. I had to give him another shot. I know how yeah. that feels. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, then you went with a couple other long shots: Luke List and Pendrith. Uh, Pendrith uh, has only played here twice. He does have a top 20 list has a win, as we mentioned, uh, just a couple of years ago in 2022. Yeah, I know list was, you know, a longer shot when he won here, but it really, it's not, not a shock that he won here because it's a perfect fit for his game. He's an excellent driver. He is fourth best in this field strokes gain off the tee over the last 12 months. He's ninth in driving distance. So he hits it, hits it a long ways. He's 20th in this field in, in strokes gain approach. And that includes he's fifth best in this field in proximity from 200 plus yards, which there are a lot of long irons that you're going to hit on this golf course and list is excellent on, th on those type of shots. And he comes into this week hitting it. Well, he won Sanderson farms in October. Um, he's gained off the tee in five of his last six events. He's gained on approach in five straight events. So, um, you know, why, why not? I think I think Luke, I think Luke List could definitely win this tournament again. All right, uh, and then our super long shots, um, and 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 they've gone up higher since Monday, since yesterday, and that's yeah. uh, my fifth, my last pick is Sam Ryder, and Ryder. We talked about him as a player that we both agree could be uh, ready to have a, a you know a nice win at some point this year, and so this could be a good week, um, even though again it's going to be hard with the big boys, but. In two of his last three appearances, two top tens, including fourth last year. So, matter of fact, he's made ten straight cuts with four top fifteens and two top tens. So, uh, I think that's just too good for me to 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 not pass up this week. And then you went with Sam Stevens, and he has climbed all the way to two hundred and fifty to one. <laughs> and he played last year here for the first time and finished a very solid thirteenth. So I, I think I talked about Stevens, was it last week when we talked about long shots we might be on this season? Yes. Um, and, and I said I, I you want to play Sam Stevens on long golf courses because he is 13th in this field in driving distance. He's 16th best in this field off the tee. And get this, I looked at in this field who's been the best on courses over 7,400 yards over the last 12 months. Sam Stevens is first on that list. <laughs> He's wow. been the best player in this field. Right behind him are Sung JM, Xander, Sahith Tagala, Max Homa, Patrick Cantley. But Sam Stevens is first on that list. So he's just good on long golf courses. So I think he's definitely worth a shot this week. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, we went over our long shots uh, for on last week's show. And I believe, if I'm looking at it here, I believe they're all playing this week. So you had Higo, Norman, Smalley, and Stevens. And I have Hostler, Jaeger, Coles, and Rogers. So, all right, now Norman, uh, yeah, Norman, Norman's worth considering this week too. I think he's a, he's a long hitter. Yeah, getting you know, I tell you what, let's just go over the rest of the field of notables, and we'll start at the top because some of these players are coming back over from Europe, including uh, Nikolai Hoygaard. So we're finally going to see Nikolai Hoygaard. So he's playing. Adrian Moronk is is playing. So we're gonna start seeing these uh, these PGA Tour guys for the first time get get uh, get their feet wet, and it'll be interesting to see exactly uh, how they do. Um, matter of fact, and, and odds wise, uh, you got Hoygaard's at forty to one, Moronk's at fifty to one, and uh, we could also uh, add in because again, I want to make sure I don't uh, butcher these names. But I, I spent a lot of time trying to make sure that we we, we get these uh, pronunciations correct. But um, where is he? Where's where's this? Uh, oh, here he is. Rio uh, Hisasuni. Uh, Hisasuni. 
uh, is uh, the 2023 European Rookie Tour of the Year. He's playing this week, and he actually has been playing some pretty good golf as well. So uh, here are some kids to keep uh, to keep an eye on that will be playing here um, this week. And then also, I got to talk about Zalatoris and Berger. They're both 50 to one. Very impressed with the way that they played last week. I don't care how bad, the, easy the golf course is, considering the layoff and the injuries. It's really impressive. Impressed me enough too that I actually, all of a sudden, I'm like, you know what? I mean, we're seeing some really crazy things happen so far this year. <laughs> Maybe Will Zalatoris can actually be in the running this week. I don't know. We'll see. That's the next would... trick. How do you do back to back? See, that's right. the other thing. One week, one round to two rounds. Every step, yeah. as far as new that they haven't been involved with, that's the. But Zalatoris really usually plays well at this golf course. I think just the fact that that they're both playing again for a second consecutive week bodes well that they're feeling healthy yes. enough to do that. I think, yeah, Will has I think gotten better each of the, these last few events. Berger uh, couldn't believe how well he played in his his first event in eighteen months or whatever it was. Um, I'm not going to quite get to those guys. I, I I don't think they're quite there yet where they're sure. ready to win. Yeah. Um, if I was going to bat one of them, it, it'd be Will because this this is this is a course I think. I mean, he Zale Torres lost in the playoff to, to Luke List a, a few years ago. Yeah. I think that was I, the I one think, he should have won. I think, yeah. Yeah. I think Zale Torres will win here at some point in his career. You know, assuming good health. Um, I don't think he's quite ready yet, but you know, I think um, he's he's not far off. Same, same goes for for Berger. And then uh, other notables, uh, Keith Mitchell was once again, he did it last year. I think he did it the year before that. He seems to get off to now really good starts uh, as far as the year is concerned. So uh, keep an eye on him. But the only reason is because it's hot start. He's terrible here on this golf course. But other than that, he's starting to play well. So maybe not this week, but just keep an eye on him. If he's uh, Christian, uh, as I said, uh, went with him. Uh, he's also 70 to one. Um other guys to keep an eye on, maybe that uh, that, that we should. Uh, Alex Smalley, as I mentioned on, on your side, he's a hundred to one. Um, let's see, who else were you looking at as far as some other potential long shot? Aaron, oh, by the way, Patrick Rogers almost made my list as a long shot. Twenty uh, fourth at Sony, fourteenth at Century. Uh, he has two top tens and eight appearances. So I was looking at uh, at Patrick Rogers, um, who now is at sixty to one. But what about you? Yeah, Austin Eckert was the other guy I looked at as a longer shot. Um, I think he he might still be available at like 130, 150, 150 130 to, one, to one. Yeah, um, you know was was in the mix. Uh, what was it at Sony? Was was he in the mix recently? Yeah, I mean he uh, ended yes, up coming forty yes, second at Sony, Sony but he, yep. he was in the mix. Uh, Eckert came. He was twenty fifth last week at, at Amex, so not a bad showing. And he he does a lot of things well that I'm looking for this week. He's a good long uh, long iron player. Um, he scores pretty well on this long par four so he, he just he feels like a guy who's gonna win this year potentially um now it would be a big ask because i don't even know is he is he um i think he's played here before but hasn't had much success which who's is that i did not end up austin ekro oh ekro yeah he's played he's played here the past two seasons the past few years and missed a cut both of them um, which is why i did not get yeah. to him but um he's definitely someone i considered yeah this isn't one of those events that you have like 15 guys in the, you know, that, uh, you know, that make the first cut. It's like, you know, it's the first cut's really small. And then you have a few other guys that, uh, you know, but it's not, there's not a lot of guys that have a lot of great history here. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not, it's not, it's not an, it, 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 so it makes it a little easier to handicap because it's just, unless you're just, you got some other, again, it, I, I don't really care about how he plays at this golf course. I care more about other stats or other, you know, maybe he's uh, playing well at this point in time. Um, Ben Griffin's been an interesting long shot. Maybe we should keep, be keeping an eye on sometime. You know, maybe he's ready to win. He's got two top tens in his last three, ninth last yeah. week. And I'm not talking necessarily this week because, again, um, a Taylor Moore, I think, is getting 130 to one, which I think is crazy. We know how talented he is. He was 11th here last year. So, um, a little bit surprised you're getting 130 to one uh, with uh, Taylor Moore. By the way, I mentioned uh, his Hisasuni. His uh, he's made 10 straight cuts worldwide with nine top 30s, four top 10s. He won in France last September, and that's when he was 166th in the world. He's now 72nd. So mm. uh, that's why we mentioned him. Uh, let's see. Michael Kim is now 100th in the world. Don't forget he won the John Deere back in 2018. 
But um, his previous ranking, high ranking, was 283. That was the win in 2018. But he's now down to 100th. So he is starting to play better golf. He's got four top 25s in his last six with one top five, sixth last week. Not saying to take him this week. But anyway, Scott Stallings back in 2015 and 2014 went back-to-back win, playoff loss to Jason Day. So that's crazy for Scott Stallings. But since then, no top fives, excuse me, no top 25s in his last seven at this golf course. But he did have a hell of a two-year run here, that's for sure. So, Yeah, Taylor Moore is a good shout-out. I looked at him. Um, kind of a guy with a similar profile, Justin Suh, I think is interesting. He's just an excellent POA putter. He's a good enough driver where I think he, he can survive here. Um, Bet. Ben Griffin, I, I want to play Ben Griffin on short golf courses. I, th- okay. I don't think he's long enough here. I think next week would be a time to consider Griffin. Probably not to win, but you know maybe if you're into the top 10, top 20 bets, I think Pebble next week is, is a good fit for Ben Griffin. I think he's even had some, some pretty good success there. Okay, a couple of uh, notes. Um, oh, by the way, Woodland is playing at 130 to 1. He's made 13 of 14 cuts here with two top 10s. But you definitely don't want to be taking Gary Woodland until we start seeing him contend a little bit. Still unsure about, uh, you know, I mean, anything. When I hear somebody say that you had brain surgery, that freaks me out. So I hope he's going to be okay. He obviously is because he's playing golf again professionally on the PGA Tour. So, um, yeah, got to see his game go. uh, Round into shape first. Okay. So a couple of notes. The event starts on Wednesday. So... I think it was a very smart move. Uh, This has everything to do with the NFL championship Sunday. They did not want to compete with that. So they start the event on Wednesday. They end on Saturday. So, you know, what's great about that is if you like to gamble on golf and football, the way me and Jared do, (laughs) you, if you make money on uh, the PGA tour on Saturday, you can bankroll (laughs) on the Sunday in the NFL. Uh, But anyway, uh, that that's, that's an important note. And then again, Pebble beach next week, uh, where we're going to have a big time field. So, uh, and this is going to be a heck of a run too. This is that. What is it? Is this yeah. Like, the, what, the, what is it in February? This is a. This is this is my favorite month of golf. I think all season, honestly. Tory is awesome. Pebble is obviously an awesome course. The event usually isn't as great because the field's not good, but it is this year. And then we get waste management after that and then we get the genesis at riviera which is my, my favorite course on tour the week after that so the next next four weeks are awesome and which are the elevated ones pebble and then which is the one after that pebble and genesis are elevated uh, waste management is not this year that's why we were talking before the show that field might not be as strong as it usually is i still i think it'll be pr- plenty strong though it might be you know kind of similar to what we're getting this week so genesis comes how many weeks after pebble two two yeah it's pebble wow. Elevated Genesis or Pebble elevated waste management and then Genesis elevated. That's a heck of a three. So that's in three weeks. That's a three week run. Three weeks. Two yeah. elevateds and, and Phoenix. Yeah. Fo- be, you know, following Tory, which is an awesome course. So. Yeah. That's it's awesome. Good, good stretch. And again, stretch. Uh, the one and done's uh, Jan, Matsuyama, Morikawa, Fina. That's her top three. We'll let everybody know who our official top. Uh, our one and dones are on our Discord channel, so that's why you want to subscribe there. And again, it's free. All you got to do is uh, link up, and you're there. Um, Jared, you're down to M Day and Finau. Did you say that you were leaning towards someone? I think Day is probably my lean right now because I probably don't want to use him next week. I think the field's just too strong. Yeah. And um, and and I had a top five that included Day with Morikawa. Um, but I was thinking, yeah, Morikawa, I'm going to save him for an elevated event or a ma- you know, major. That, so Morikawa is someone I will consider strongly next week, I think. Just, you know, th- those are shorter accuracy type courses, which fits his game perfectly. There you go. Um, so my, my, my top three are M, which you have in your top three, Bradley, and then Thagala, which you have as your top pick this week. So there you go. That's going to wrap it up. So next week we will talk about uh, the elevated event at Pebble Beach. Thank goodness. I, I hope they uh, stay there for elevated for a few years uh, <laughs> because once they go back to the old Pebble, it's uh, not a very watchable event up until like Sunday. So do we uh, do we know? Is it still a pro am? That's even a good though question. It's out, yeah. 
Let's, let's get the. I'm looking at the. I can't. I can't see why not. Yeah, the app right now. I'm looking at it says AT&T Pebble Beach Pro Am. So yeah. elevated event, but with amateur with amateurs out there. Crazy, huh? In- interesting. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's just one of those. I guess everybody's going to have an elevated event at some point. Yeah, yeah they, they did say they were going to rotate them through. Yeah. I don't think they didn't change much from last year. I, this might be the only event that. Oh, the only new one that wasn't that wasn't elevated that became elevated that I can think of. But maybe they're going to let them be elevated for a few years at a time. Maybe Could there's be. a reason for that instead of going, all right, you yep. get it this year, then you won't have it again for four years. Or maybe they're just saying, all right, you're going to get it for two or three years, and then you won't have it again for another three yep. or four years. But I'm sure there's a reason. All right. Anyway, so February is going to be an awesome month. Uh, and uh, does that start next week? Yeah, it starts uh, Yeah, next week. So Thursday, actually. Thursday is the first uh, of the month. So awesome golf in February coming up. Jared, appreciate it as always. Uh, we'll talk to you uh, next Tuesday. And again, uh, look, uh, hopefully we'll get Jan to uh, record these videos soon. I know she's obviously the time is uh, is uh, what's holding her back. But as soon as we can get those uh, videos up, the insider report and her uh, swing analysis reports, that'll be really cool. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to uh, like, uh, share, and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can let us know either through YouTube or on our Discord channel. For Jared Smola, I'm Greg DePama. We'll see you next week.